In early 2012, Renee Lopes Pocknett, Education Director for the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe, approached USGS National Tribal Liaison Monique Fordham about the need for a summer science program for Mashpee Wampanoag youth. Working together with Quan Toby and Chucky Green from the tribe's Natural Resource Department, Chris Poloni and Ben Gutierrez from the USGS Woods Hole Coastal and Marine Science Center, and educational consultant Kristen Wyman, they developed a new pilot program. This five-week program would pair tribal culture keepers with scientists, weaving traditional ecological knowledge together with Western science. The goal? To educate and empower Native youth while strengthening their connections to their ancestral lands. Native youth in science, preserving our homelands. short time in the making, but uh, a lot of hard work and dedication went into putting this together, so we hope that you all have a good time. Does anybody know the word for water? Nafi. Very good. So here's the word for water. And how do I say mine? What goes at the front for mine? Not very good. And guess what is cool about water too? Look at that. When I say my water and then the beam, what do I really mean? My water that is what? Part of me. That's right. My water that is me and I'm it. And do you, do you know that the first little Wampanoag boy was created from the foam at the edge of the sea? And he's still alive. He's oh. living in you. Huh? He's living what? in you. That's a I was going to say the water molecules tighten mm -hmm. together. That's right. It gets colder, so they stop moving around so much. They're not all spread that's apart. When it evaporates. Right. They are, they're spread apart when it evaporates. But when it, they condense, they, they come closer can't. together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They all stick together. And then what happens when the cloud gets really, really heavy? It, it rains. And what's that term called? Precipitation. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's. Raise your hands. You got yeah, all your hands. Are you all ready? Yeah, that's the first one. We're done. Let's see. This is that's true. That's right. And that's right. Cool. I use you. So try to. Try to What else can describe this, the channel? So where the water would normally be is called the channel. What's the bottom of the channel like? Weird. Ew, that's nasty. It looks All like right. grape juice. So what's our dissolved oxygen? 0 0.19. 0 0.19. Everybody got that? Dissolved blueberry plant. This is a blueberry bush. <laughs> these are actually oh, they're pretty good. yeah these actually are a little early this is a, a plant that we use in ceremony we we burn the cedar leaves to make smoke to smudge with and it, we use that as a purification and as a communication with the spirits oak trees have acorns the white oak trees have an edible acorn that is actually very sweet in our relatives a long time ago, and some to still today, they make um, bread out of the acorns. It's very sweet and very tasty. It was one of the more important food sources in the old days, when our people depended on what grew. If you had a bad I want to do it. I want to do it. It's not okay. easy. Now we've filtered this sample out of there. Mm -hmm. Okay, this sample will be used to determine the nutrients. Else the tank, uh, the stuff like when no, we talked about phosphorus and else. nitrogen. Oh, right. Before it gets to that point, the sun expands. Can't they build a oh, sun? But so, yes, all we're all worldwide. Every place on the planet is seeing four millimeters of rise every year. 
That's a lot. It is. When you start adding it up year after year after year. Right. It's just a single one. Yes. So, who had a geo before? Okay. If you open a geo with those quartz crystals, crystals, there was a space there so the crystal could grow. And that's why it had that crystal form. This is the same thing, but the crystals are smaller, and there's a little bit of iron in it. Dinosaurs have been wandering around out on mud flats, and that's why they have so many footprints preserved there. You're going pretty fast, though. Mm -hmm. But relating to the stone, I have this piece, which is soapstone. So, you know what? That's the I don't make one from Jerry High Polish. Oh, you made that? So, yeah. And out of that antler, you cut pieces off. You make these points. And these are tools. Tools to use to make the points that Jonathan has. So he's going to show you. He's not going to pass them around because some of these are thousands of years old. You can see how thin it is. Right? We're actually able to make stone tools that were uh, used in surgery, tattooing, even eye surgery. The first people on earth to do eye surgery, native people. Did you know that? No? First people on earth to do brain surgery too, with stone tools. Why? Because stone can be many times sharper than a steel scalpel. Right? You can make an incision one micron thick. You saw the way I did the nut? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go here and here. Oh, all right. So you're making a quiver like from this red fox, and you store your arrows in there. Can I shoot Just the arrow? Arrows. Ow! So you can store the arrow? Go out hunting and shoot It's the, where the um, water meets the um, sky. That's another indication of storms. So let's go look down here. Perfect! Come on over! Yeah. Come on, guys! You guys want to Yeah. Gravel. So how many storm events do you see in this one? One, two, three, three storm events. Yeah. And you see the same depletion that we had over on the other side with the seaweed and everything falling up into the corner? That's happening all the way down to where there's at least 30 or 40 jetties. As the sea level rises, environments change. The marshes move backwards into the uplands and that changes where you're going to hunt, where you're going to fish. <coughs> because remembering the past oftentimes gives you a window into the future. Like Chucky was saying, you know, our people historically have been through this, been through many changes in the earth. Our history and our culture are lessons. And there's a correlation between modern science and our culture, which is based on the observations, the historical observations of our people. And in order to make sound decisions for your children, your grandchildren, for your communities, when you become leaders of your communities, you need to be able to make informed decisions. And those are based on experience. The experience of your antecedents is one of the best teachers that you'll have at your disposal. Because obviously, they made some good decisions that allowed us to continue to be here. But knowing the past is certainly a good tool to be able to plan for the future. And so it's important to listen to the stories, to remember them, to digest the information. When you're talking about Ma Shop, to, to understand that the connections with Mashop, the, the cultural hero, and the actual changes that did take place on the earth. 
to read in between the lines, but most importantly to pay attention, to remember, to hear, <laughs> listen, and process it. Because once we're gone, you guys become the old ones. And somebody's going to ask you a question, and I don't want you to have regret that, oh, I should have paid attention that day and Chucky was talking. So you can even draw, like, see on this one, one, two, three. So this is one of the this is, Put some grass. It's supposed to be four. It's supposed to be one to four. If you look down at the bottom of the graph, you can see they're color-coded. So the yellow line is from December 2010. If everybody looks in the lower right-hand corner of their map, what is there's a box that says legend. Yellow is glacier. The glaciers are building, precipitation was coming, falling down the glacier, building the ice higher, making the glacier move south. Well, at that time, our tribe, our people are probably out here. So that bucket, you're probably picture that made with a bucket. You see that it's about a mile and a half. Remember that, because we're going to use it later. Yeah. Well, there's sometimes islands within the ponds. Man, you couldn't get a better day to be on the river. This is the trail. Amos Landing's the trail right here. Oh, I love this thing. I guess we're right at that point. I went up. Go on up close to Renee. Ayano. She just said it. You know what this is? You know what this is because we eat off of it. Everybody loves what this gives us. That. Um, no. Berry. Blueberry. Blueberry. Yeah. 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 Put it in the Yeah, it's fresh and salt water. Yeah. yeah. It's salty, fresh. Sometimes it's saltier than other times. And so where it's salty, where we salt roads, and the salt gets washed off, sometimes in ditches you'll see this tall weed growing. And um, it's considered invasive, but on Cape Cod, we found native subspecies. What's that one called, Pam? This one's called Tripsicum. And this was found at the edge of a salt marsh uh, on the other side of Pleasant Bay. And, um, I don't know if it occurs here or not, but it might. It's considered rare in New England. Okay, what is it? A house. A house. Well, how's the salt marsh like a house? It's a home to animals. It's a home to many animals. Yeah, so we came down, we saw the heron was right here uh, feeding. Uh, as we walk up, looking in any of those pools here, you can see lots of fish in, the, in these little pools here. Lots of things are living in the salt marsh. So there's things that live nothing, nowhere else. They don't live in the forest, they don't live out in the open ocean, but they live in the salt marsh. Right after lunch, we're going to actually take a net in some of these waters here. We're going to try to see what lives out in the salt marsh. This fish is called sheep's head minnow. Can you put this? They're really in? short, little fat, cute fish. They're very cute. Um, and they're like short and fat. They look like a little bass, like a little freshwater bass, except they're small. And these fish, like they can be up in muddy areas, way up in really warm water. So like up further in a salt marsh. They hit this, they can't go anywhere. They end up swimming back down into your bag. And then we gather the bag and we bring this net up and dump it out and see what we caught, okay? Weights on the bottom, floats on the top. This is good, Tony. Right there. Walk away the brass. No. You don't want your fish to get by. You just came. There you go. You're blocking now. Think of it as a net. You don't want it to ball. Go ahead, walk up the toe. Walk up the toe. Flash of silvery. What do you think those are? Silver. Yeah, it's too big. Silver what? Silver things. They got silver what? Backs. Silver. Are they back silver? Stomach. Sides. Sides. Silver sides. There you go, Crabby. Okay. Oh, those fat ones? They're like fat and they don't have big lines on them. Yep. Alright, be careful with those weights. Oh, that's where we have the shellfish. 
Hurricane Beach is right there across from us. You see the sand. You can see some people clamming out there. That's Hurricane Beach over there, um, which is down Willsworth Road. Now, what do you do with these recordings? I ate it. We're so grateful that all you young people came and you worked hard and you learned some things and you showed us respect and uh, you listened to your elder folks and we're just grateful for all of you. How many of you would like to come back again? All right, we're gonna work on a plan and we look, we look very much forward to doing that. But right now is the last day of our program. We've had a lot of fun and uh, I just wanna know if you guys want us to say a few words before we start with our little awards. No, nope. I'm just to say thank you so much because it's so good. The kids are great. Thanks for hanging in there, and uh, hopefully it was really fun, and you'll be interested in coming back and doing it again. Um, what else? Uh, the science staff struggled to bring this together because we had such a short fuse. When Renee and I first met, uh, it was a surprise. And, uh, Kristen and Troy actually kicked us off a long time ago, but the actual big deal was when Monique, Monique said, I'm coming to Woods Hall, and we're going to do this thing. So it's really great. The family, it's one big family here, so it's a nice operation. Yay! In the Water temperatures and salinity. And I learned the traditional the foods that our ancestors ate. And I learned how important respect is. Maybe I'll do that. And that's what I learned. Sure. This is the ocean part, and then all the bushes and stuff where it separates the marsh from the ocean. And then these are all the ponds or whatever, ocean parts, brackish water, that are connecting. And then these are the cattails, and these are the grasses, and then the big trees all around the marsh. Um, I learned why it smells so bad because all of the like organic stuff in it and it really is a cool place because it's um, a resting place for the birds and where's Harold? Er, Jim. <laughs> Harold, he really, he taught me a lot. He, um, he actually had like diagrams and stuff. He had like a baby bottle which was like a nursery and stuff and a bed to resting place. It was good. Dear Dad. I want to thank you for making me go to the science camp because I really didn't care until now. Uh, I did not know about our culture. I also want to thank Chucky, Chrissy, Renee, Daryl, and Chiefy because they taught me a lot of the stuff such as the, wa the water level, how the water level moves up four millimeters a day. Also, I learned how sediment, how rocks have different sediment levels and how they are broken down over the all the time, uh, and how glaciers make islands. The way they make islands is when glaciers move, they push up dirt in it um, to the surface, and it makes islands such as Cape Cod. Uh, whenever it is high tide, when it comes in, it kills cedar trees. Every time it gets higher, when the water rises. Also, I learned from Jesse, the first boy was formed by foam, when we heard about this story. But one of the best things that I learned in camp was when we had traditional, one of the, my favorite things that we had in camp was the traditional foods. And something fun we did was making crushed up walnuts by using tools that our ancestors did use. Uh, the science camp taught me a lot of stuff. Uh, I really had fun, and I'm looking forward to coming back next year. Thank you. Awesome.